a wipeout at the White House. The latest meeting between President Trump and congressional leaders has ended abruptly in a new round of recriminations. That leaves much of the United States government still shut down over the issue of a border wall. Congressional correspondent Lisa Desjardins reports. It was the shortest shutdown meeting yet. Federal workers will not be receiving their paychecks. This afternoon, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer were in the White House for about 30 minutes when Schumer said the president ended their meeting, refusing to reopen government. Well, unfortunately, the president just got up and walked out. Uh, he asked uh, Speaker Pelosi, will you agree to my wall? She said no. And he just got up and said, then we have nothing to discuss, and he just walked out. As Democrats spoke, President Trump tweeted confirmation that he ended today's talks. Uh, we just ended a very short meeting in the Situation Room. Republicans, led by Vice President Pence, pointed to Democrats as the problem, saying Democrats made it clear they will not move closer to the president's position on the border wall. Today, in this brief meeting, we heard once again that Democratic leaders are unwilling to even negotiate to resolve this partial government shutdown or address the crisis at our southern border. This was the capstone to a day where the two sides moved farther apart. Stop playing chicken with our lives. Democrats started the morning flanked by furloughed federal workers. The first order of business open up the government. You heard these people, right? Yes. yes. Open, up yes. open it up. Among them, Holly Salamito, who had worked at Housing and Urban Development and now heads a local union chapter. She said it's not just workers, but those in federal housing who are at risk. If there's a problem, there's no one at HUD to call. In some cases, people are facing eviction. Okay, thank you very much. This as President Trump spent the day underscoring his Oval Office address last night about border security and his demand for a southern border barrier. At a bill signing, he said, wall. We can all play games, but a wall is a necessity. All of the other things, the sensors and the drones, it's all wonderful to have and it works well, but only if you have the wall. If you don't have the wall, it doesn't matter. The president did take time to address divisions in his own party. The president and vice president lunched with Republican senators. Mr. President, are you worried about that? Sources say the president privately called for unity. Publicly, he was confident and praised GOP leader Mitch McConnell. I would say that we have a very, very unified party. Mitch has been fantastic. Everybody in that room was fantastic. Still, several Republican senators are signaling otherwise. Alaska's Lisa Murkowski, Colorado's Cory Gardner, and Maine's Susan Collins have indicated they are ready to act on bills passed by House Democrats to reopen most of government. That legislation funds most agencies for the rest of the year and funds DHS for one month, giving time for more border security talks. But Republican leader McConnell says no deal will get a vote until the president and all sides support it. Uh, we're all behind the president. We think this border security issue is extremely important to the country. Another sign that leaders are moving farther from any middle ground. Today, Vice President Pence seemed to reach out to the conservative base, speaking to talk radio host Rush Limbaugh with uncompromising tone. President Trump and I and our entire team are determined to stand firm until the Democrats in Congress come to the table and work with us to secure the border, build a wall, end this humanitarian crisis and do what's right for the American people. It is a Tomorrow, leaders again go in different directions. House Democrats plan to pass separate bills reopening most agencies, and the president plans to visit the Texas border to reinforce his case for a wall. And Lisa joins me now from Capitol Hill, along with Yamish Alcindor from the White House. Yamish, that was quite a meeting uh, by all accounts. Tell us what is the president saying about it? And uh, I guess afterwards the vice president came out with other Republicans and talked to you and other reporters. 
Well, negotiations essentially spun out of control and hit a roadblock. Um, this was a, quite a scene on the White House lawn today. The Democrats were saying that the president threw a temper tantrum, and Republicans were saying that the Democrats were not telling the truth. Now, the president, a few minutes after this meeting that was supposed to be a little bit longer but ended about 30 minutes in, tweeted, and I want to read to you what he tweeted. He tweeted, just left a meeting with Chuck and Nancy, a total waste of time. I asked, what is going to happen in 30 days if I quickly open things up? Are you going to approve border security, which includes a wall or steel barrier? Nancy said no. I said bye-bye. Nothing else works. Now, Senator Schumer said that the president then slammed his hands on the table while he was in the meeting. And I then talked to Vice President Pence about that and said, what was the mood in that meeting? And are we any closer to a national emergency? Vice President Pence told me that the president, quote, the president walked into the room and passed out candy. I don't recall him ever raising his voice or slamming his hands. So what we have is two completely different stories about how this meeting went. What is clear, though, is that things are going to be prolonged. This shutdown is not ending anytime soon. And Democrats and Republicans are really going back to their quarters. So, Lisa, to you now, what, what are Republicans, what are people saying on the Hill about this, about what the breakdown <clears throat> of these talks yet again? And uh, how long do they think this can go on? Well, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi returned to the Hill and she told reporters that the president was being petulant, in her words, and she repeated some of what she said at the White House. I spoke to Republican House members uh, on their way to a vote, and it was fascinating, Judy. Several of them just shrugged. One of them literally shrugged and said, that's how things are right now. It's broken down to this point. However, I will also say, from those Republican House members, they seem to be coalescing more around the president than I've seen before. The president seems to have convinced at least House Republicans that he is very serious about pushing for his wall. In the words of these House Republicans, they now think Democrats need to bring an offer to the table. That's something I did hear from these House members last week, and they're saying it more and more. However, Democrats are saying something else, Judy. They're saying the president is not someone who can be negotiated right, right now, uh, that he is being unreasonable and unruly. And here's the interesting part, Judy. Democrats are saying they think the pressure needs to be on Mitch McConnell, that they think Senate Republicans are the place where there could be a breakthrough in these negotiations, and they want to add pressure on those Senate Republicans. We'll see if that happens. Pointing fingers in the opposite direction, uh, both, both sides are. Yamish, we know that there are polls showing that uh, bare majority, but a majority of Americans blame the president for this shutdown. What do we know about how he's trying to change public opinion? Well, the president is changing public or trying to change public opinion by meeting with lawmakers in person, by going on TV and sending other representatives for the White House on TV, and by going on conservative talk radio. The president today held a meeting with congressional Senate Republicans, and in that meeting, he repeatedly said, we need to have unity, we need to be strong. This is the, probably the best time we're going to have to get funding for the wall, so stick with me. The other thing that's important is that Vice President Pence went on Rush Limbaugh's conservative radio show today. Now, the Vice President Pence just on Monday said that he hates the word base and that he this is not about politics. But then today he went on Rush Limbaugh's show and said, thank you for all that you're doing for us and thank you for building this movement. Add to that the fact that the president is going to be heading to the border tomorrow. He's going to be making his case, talking to people in Texas, um, talking to them about this, what he sees as a crisis on the border. So what we're seeing is a White House that's using its messaging power both all over as much as they possibly can um, to make the case that this is a crisis and that Democrats are in the wrong here. And Lisa, very quickly, uh, political dynamics on the Hill. How do these members of Congress uh, seem? It, it appears they're getting farther apart. There is a real split here, Judy, and again, it's a little bit House and Senate. I spoke to a very plugged-in House Republican, and he told me, listen, most House Republicans do not have federal workers in their district. So he point blank said, it's not in our interest to end this shutdown. I countered and said, yes, but there are some interesting groups like, say, Customs and Border Patrol officers who will not be paid. That's pretty uh, generally a demographic that Republicans think about a lot. He said, yes, that's true. Once we see law enforcement suffering, that might move the dial for Republicans. But otherwise, the federal worker argument is not something we care about. We care much more about border security, and we think it's a serious threat. Democrats, on the other hand, think this is all a very large political mistake for Republicans. They say walking out of a meeting is something that will cost them politically for months, perhaps years. We'll see. Another day, uh, apparently no closer and, and apparently even yeah. farther apart, the two sides are. Lisa Desjardins, Michelle Sendor, thank you both. Thanks.
And we'll look at the effects of the shutdown and where to go from here after the news summary.